Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck. This one built around Titan's Nest as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 4 mana enchantment saying at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library and you may put that card into your graveyard if you want to. And then you can exile a card from your graveyard to add a colorless mana to your mana pool. But this mana can only be spent to cast colored spells without X in their mana cost. So Titan's Nest makes for a potentially very powerful ramp option that can uh, generate a ton of colorless mana. And the obvious way to build around Titan's Nest is to go with Giruda, Doom of Depths. So this isn't going to be the most original deck, because at the end of the day it's just a Giruda deck featuring Titan's Nest. But I have been pretty impressed with the inclusion of Titan's Nest in the deck. So for those that don't know, Giruda, Doom of Depths, a 6 mana, 6-6 six, six legendary Demon Kraken that can be played as your companion if your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs. So looking at the curve here, it kind of looks like a piano keyboard. So we've got a bunch of twos to ramp into our four drops. Hopefully Titan's Nest is the four drop we ramp into on turn three. So we can play a turn for Giruda, which will then, when it enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of each player's library into their graveyard. And then we can put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under our control. Hopefully among the four cards we mill over, we can find something like a spark double, which can then copy the Giruda to then mill the top four cards once again and keep finding more copies of spark double, additional copies of Giruda, or maybe some of the other finishers in the deck. And then by putting all those cards in the graveyard with Giruda's ability, we're also fueling the Titan's Nest, so we can empty your hand of all those expensive creatures that we might be holding in our hand. We can also often play Giruda and a copy of Spark Double that we might be holding in hand in the same turn, thanks to all the mana that the Titan's Nest can generate. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we've got all ways of generating extra mana with Paradise Druid. We've got Skull Prophet, which also does double duty of uh, filling the graveyard for Titan's Nest. So if we have a Titan's Nest in play, it's even better to sometimes mill the top two cards with a Skull Prophet as opposed to tapping it for mana, as it will essentially make two mana by milling two cards. We've got two copies of Wolf Willow Haven, and then four copies of Gross Spiral to put an extra land in play. Then at 4 mana we've got a full play set of Titan's Nest, which can potentially generate a ton of extra mana compared to the alternatives like Migration Path. The downside of course is that it is an enchantment that can be interacted with, so for example could be bounced by a Teferi, which is gonna set us back. Then we've got two copies of Thassa Deep Dwelling, which is also great to hit with Giruda, as it can then blink Giruda end of turn to potentially find even more stuff. And we've got a lot of creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities that uh, synergize nicely with Thassa, and we can also generate enough blue devotion to turn this into an actual creature. And then the ability to tap a creature down also gives us a bit of additional interaction. And then we've got the full play set of Spark Double, which is a card we are always hoping to hit with Giruda, as it can then copy our legendary creature, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and re-trigger its Enter the Battlefield ability. And also very cheap to play out of our hand with a Titan's Nest for just a single blue mana, exiling three cards from our graveyard. And then we get to the curve toppers in the deck. Full play set of Dream Eater as a 6 mana 4-3 with flash and flying. Enters the battlefield, lets us surveil 4, meaning we can potentially put 4 cards from our library into our graveyard, which means we also generate 4 mana with the Titan's Nest. So it's kind of like the Dream Eater only cost us 2 mana. And then uh, when we do, we can also return a non-land permanent an opponent controls to its owner's hand. So it gives us some additional interaction there as well. We've got one copy of Kogla, the Titan Ape, which can find a creature when it enters the battlefield and destroys artifacts or enchantments the opponent controls when it attacks. And we also have a couple humans here with a Skull Prophet we can return to make Kogla indestructible. And then uh, three additional copies of Giruda, since it's still fine to just play it out of our hands if the companion gets countered somehow. And then two copies of Endray's Forerunners, which will also help us end the game, giving all our creatures plus two plus two Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. And then the mana base, we've got a total of 26 lands, including two islands, a swamp and three forests that we can search up with the Fable Passage, which also puts an extra land in the graveyard for the Titan's Nest. And then uh, we don't really want to be searching up the basic swamp very often, because once we get a Titan's Nest in play in the late game, we're mostly casting double blue and triple green spells. So the one basic swamp is kind of a nombo with the Titan's Nest, but it's still there in case we need to search it up to cast our black spells. And then we've got all 12 shock lands for Watergrave, for Overgrown Tomb, for Breeding Pool, and then also the four Triomes, which we can also cycle in the late game. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Put 
opponent on a blue-white artifact deck featuring Steel Overseer. They could be playing Glass Casket, in which case I probably want to go for Spiral over Skull Prophet here to make sure they can mess with my uh, ramp early on. Crystal and Giant. Let's see what keywords that they get first. Death Touch, pretty relevant against my 6-6 six -six Geruda. So probably one of the better keywords to hit right off the bat. This turn we can Spiral plus uh, Skull Prophets and then we'll be guaranteed to play Jiru the next turn. Blast Zone. And yeah, there's a glass casket, as expected, so we'll still be able to play Geruda thanks to a Grow Spiral here. Corridor Monitor to untap the Steel Overseer, pretty nice. So we need some good hits with uh, Geruda here. Trample and Death Touch, right? Represents quite a bit of damage. So I'll take six. Titan's Nest is interesting. Um can't quite play it this turn and play Geruda in the same turn, but it will potentially allow me to play multiple spells next turn. So... Dream Eater was a good hit. And then I think I just put everything in Graveyard. I could keep the Four Honors. But next turn I'm just gonna go like Tainta's Nest into Spark Double plus Thassa. Just want the maximum amount of cards in graveyards. And then I'll probably bounce this Crystal and Giants. All that glitters on the Overseer, now an 8 8. Make it at 2. Alright. Opponent's not messing around. So I have to chum block this uh, Steel Overseer. I guess uh, Dream Eater goes since we want to copy Geruda. And then hoping to hit another Dream Eater. Well, that could also work. I could still play Dream Eater and then Spark Double Geruda too. Start with the Spark Double. Doesn't really matter what I exile here. Then I'll go with another Geruda. Another Dream Eater. Put this all in the graveyards. Do have to be careful that I don't mill myself, but we still have plenty of cards remaining. This bounces a Steel Overseer, and that should be pretty much game. And then I have another Steel Overseer I can play, or I can play Thassa to flicker Geruda. Alright, sweet. Well, Titan's Nest didn't play it on turn 3, but even later in the game still allows us to efficiently double spell and even triple spell onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Turn 2 Prophet into a turn 3 Titan's Nests. A couple Fable Passages to fill the graveyard. So the Nest should be able to make quite a bit of mana.
Could also go for Spiral instead of uh, Prophet on turn 2. I guess we still need to draw a land that comes into play untapped. But never mind, I can grow Spiral and then put a Fable Passage in play. That way I can play the other Fable Passage and then both passages will uh, come into play untapped. Some kind of force to spiral instead of use uh, the profit here on turn two. So we'll just draw. And then avoid getting basic swamp. And then next turn I'll be able to play Jeruda plus Thassa plus maybe something else. Opponent on an elemental ramp deck. Alright, I think we'll be able to play that Spark Double 2. So exile a bunch of cards. Using Titan's Nest can take a while. Hit a Spark Double. And our opponent concedes, that's too bad. But we would have been able to play the Thassa and the Spark Double from hand to this turn, all thanks to the mana generated by the Titan's Nest. So definitely seeing some of the advantages here over the more traditional 4 mana ramp options like Migration Path. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is missing any sort of ramp, so easy mulligan. This hand's also not great. But I guess I could spark double my Paradise Druid if needed. We'll try it. And probably on the cycling deck. I will need to hit another untapped land here in order to cast a spark double in the first place. Alright, so next turn I will be able to play Jeruda. Although Jeruda does have some downsides against Zenith Flare, since we're putting a bunch of cyclers in the opponent's graveyard. So we're powering up their uh, finisher. I have to take the damage, sadly. Could also be correct to play a Kogla first, but nah. I'm just gonna go for a Jeruda here. Don't really want to get the basic swamp, so we'll just get a forest, I guess. Kogla's triple green. Nah, that was a brick. So not the best. So right now our opponent has six Cyclers in the graveyard. I assume that if they have a Zenith Flare, we're dead. 
so there's probably no point in trying to play around it. So I'm just gonna start spark doubling Jiruda some more. Bounce the flourishing fox. Let's see if they have the Zenith Flare here. Yep, there it is. Alright, yeah, that's one of the downsides of milling the opponent with our Geruda. Maybe there's a world where we can just play Coggle and Spark Double it a few times and win the game that way, but I doubt that's going to be enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got the turn two profit into Titan's Nests, which can be pretty explosive. Even have the Fabled Passage turn one, which I don't have to play right now. I guess I can save it until turn four. But if we were to draw another Fabled Passage, I could maybe put one extra card in Graveyards for uh, Titan's Nest purposes. A Labyrinth Raptor, so a Menace Aggro deck here. Could be safer to play Paradise Druid if we expect some sort of removal spell instead of the Skull Prophets, and then I will still be able to play Geruda on curve here thanks to the Fabled Passage. Alright, sure. Because we can obviously put one card in Graveyard with the Titan's Nest, and then Fable Passage is an extra card in Graveyard as well. And if they kill the Paradise Druids, it's also going to be an extra creature in Graveyard for Titan's Nest, so it doesn't really mess up the math. Opponent could be playing the... Uh, one mana act of treason if you control a menace creature, maybe some ways to sacrifice our creatures too. So we do have to be careful that we don't uh, die to that combination. Cranko, alright. That can go. And then I'll be able to play Geruda and Spark Double in the same turn. Um, let's go with, I think, Dream Eater over Forerunners. And those can all go. I guess I could leave a Geruda on top to hit with uh, Spark Double. I guess it makes some amount of sense. Don't think I'm too worried about Cranko. But this makes their creatures basically unblockable. And then it doesn't matter what I exile from the graveyard here. Could also copy the Dream Eater instead of Geruda, but Geruda's more fun.
A risk factor hits as well. And another spark double. And then I didn't think we hit anything this time. Just a raptor. So Titan's Nest allowing us to play Geruda and Spark Double in the same turn. We are kind of on empty here, don't have any expensive cards left in hand. And didn't surveil anything to the top with the Dream Eater to draw into. So we'll kind of have to win with what we have in play, but hopefully that's enough. Let's take a quick look at uh, the opponent's graveyard to maybe get an idea of what else they might be holding. Pestle and Spirits, alright. So if they have the Wombo Combo here, then uh, we could be in trouble if they have some Burn Spell to deal one damage to all our creatures. But a Dream Eater could potentially mess with that. So if I Dream Eater Bound Spirit attack with everyone, they can chump chump, take 12, 13, 14. So they wouldn't quite be dead. So I'll th I think I'll just keep the Dream Eater in hand. And then we can respond by bouncing the Pestle and Spirits. Assuming they don't block with it here. And then these can all get in there. Keep Paradise Root back, I think. Sir point takes six. And they did prioritize keeping the Pestle and Spirit alive, so they might have uh, the Burn spell to go with it. Can still afford to play some stuff out. And then even the Paradise Druid if I wanted to. Plenty of cards in graveyards. If they do have a Blazing Volley, they would still kill my Want of creatures, but the rest would survive. Right, let's play the Dream Eater in response. Can bounce the spirits. We still lose the Paradise Roots and the Skull Prophet, but they should be dead to the Gerudas. And Blazing Volley is a sorcery, so they can't respond with another one. I guess they could have a Chandra's Pyrohelix in response to kill two Gerudas but I think they're still dead to the rest. Shock takes out one. Blazing Volley loses Death Touch. And that's game. Yeah, our opponent definitely had the means to potentially come back. With the Pastel and Spirit combo, we got lucky to find the Dream Eater off the top to bounce it in response. Alright, on to the next one. We're on the draw. This hand seems keepable. Two ramp creatures, three lands, so hopefully turn for Geruda. And that's what this deck is all about. Alright, potent on the Blood Crypts and Footfall Crater. Usually don't see that combination. Maybe a Mardu cycling deck instead of the typical Jeskai. And then Blood Crypt can maybe let them cast a Memory Leak as a discard spell. Playing Skull Prophet could potentially be better if I draw a uh, 
Titans Nest next turn to generate more mana, but they might be playing some removal spells. In which case, I would rather have the Hexproof on Paradise Root. So yeah, the advantage of playing black is that they can potentially cast a Memory Leak. It's not too effective against Companions, since those can be taken away by discard. Could have also been reasonable to play Spark Double copying Paradise Roots to ensure they can't mess with my uh, Giruda next turn. Whereas they can potentially have like a go for blood to kill my Skull Prophets. But it's also nice to keep Spark Double to copy Giruda once we play it. But yeah, once again, we are enabling Zenith Flare for the opponents by milling them. I could potentially try and win with just Dream Eaters and Spark Doubles. But I don't know if that's going to be enough. Could be worth a shot if we want to play around Zenith Flare a little bit better. Yeah, I guess I'll try it. Just pass for now. Can flash in a Dream Eater. Maybe they attack with the Stingers. Or I could have main face bounced them. A Rescuer, sure. So I guess I'll Dream Eater now, so that if they cycle to get the damage from the Stingers, they can't get the token from the Rescuer. Yeah, still don't really want to cast Giruda. I don't think. We'll just attack for four. Could even send in one of my other creatures here. And then still play a Dream Eater. And then do I main phase a Dream Eater? I guess I'll wait. So in response I could Dream Eater in case they pick up another Cycler here so they don't deal damage with the Stinger. But they can just replay the Stinger, I guess. End of turn, I might bounce a Rescuer so they can make another token in my turn. Alright, they're attacking with the Stinger. That's good news. And the Rescuer. Maybe they have a Raking Claws they want to cast. But typically don't see Raking Claws in the cycling decks because it's two mana to cycle. I do like Thassa. Could also bounce a token, but would rather make them replay the rescuer here. Alright, they're just gonna Zenith Flare my face. Opponent at 19. Yeah, if they have another Zenith Flare, there's not much I can do about it. So do I just go for Giruda anyway, hoping to find Andre's Forerunners, which can maybe help me end the game? Let's see, it would be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, plus 7, all trample. So yeah, Forerunners would win me the game. 
And if we suspect they have another Zenith player in hand, it's the only way I can ensure victory right now. So I guess we'll go for it. Alright, there it is. So we tried to play around Zenith Flare as best as we could. It's possible I would have died to the first Zenith Flare if I played Giruda earlier, since we would have powered up their uh, Zenith Flare to begin with. But it's also possible that they didn't have a second Zenith Flare and we would have been able to win without ever playing Giruda, but... Uh, Alright, on to the next one. We're on the draw. This hand is missing a 2-mana ram creature, so can't really keep. Alright, this is a little better. Facing a red-black deck with Knight of Ebon Legion. Maybe Rakdos Knights. Next turn, maybe play Triome plus another Haven, and then turn four, Giruda. Second Haven. And then still cast a growth spiral. So Mardu Knights. Ooh, Everquill Phoenix. That's gonna hurt. So I don't think I have enough mana to go Titan's Nest plus Geruda. Let's see, play Nests, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm gonna be one mana short. But then next turn I'll be able to Titan's Nest plus Spark Double plus maybe some other stuff. Opponent is playing Kunoro, so they do have some hate for Geruda, that's for sure. Uh, Dream Eater or Thassa. I think I'm gonna play it safe and just go for Dream Eater bouncing the Phoenix. And then I can keep a Thassa on top, and next turn go Titan's Nest plus double plus Thassa. Now, I am milling my opponent, so we could potentially mill a phoenix that they can return with the feather, but I'll take five for now. And then we'll play the nests. Play one mana spark double. It's not a spark double. And it's a dream eater. Get in there. And then play Thassa. Now I can't use a Titan's Nest to use Thassa's ability. Because it's only to cast 
colored spells and not to use colored abilities. So, otherwise I would have been able to maybe play Thassa and tap a creature down. But instead we'll just exile one card and play a 3-mana Thassa. Our opponent takes it. Could also hold the Thassa if we're afraid of uh, Extinction Event, but it doesn't seem like a deck playing Extinction Event to me. And then I guess we'll flicker Geruda. Could also play it safe and flicker Dream Eater to bounce the Hawk, but this is more fun. And hit a Kogla, which is a cherry on top. Alright, if we can uh, dodge something like Extinction Events, this should be game. Alright, looks like our opponent may have disconnected. Can even destroy a Feather token here to rub the salt in the wounds. So once again we drew the Titan's Nest to turn late, but even playing it after we already played Geruda still allowed us to uh, make use of the extra mana and help us deploy our hand faster, so it still wasn't uh, completely useless. So yeah, the Titan's Nest has definitely seemed to perform in this deck. The downside of course is that it can be interacted with, as we said in the intro, so it's not all pure upside, but when it doesn't get removed it usually does more than uh, most of the other 4 mana ramp cards. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.